Hi everybody, Sean Holsinger here from HolsingersFlyShop.com. Uh, today the fly I'm going to bring to you is another wet fly. Um, this is a fly that I picked up off of the guide that we were fishing with the other weekend on Penn's Creek. I'm Tom Doman with Penn's Creek Guides. We had a great time up there fishing with us. This is one that he showed me. Um, he called this an, an alder. It's actually a variant of an alder. So what we're going to I'm going to show you how he ties it with with black thread. Start out with black thread on a size 14, 1560 Daiichi wet fly hook. The next thing we're going to put on is a piece of gold tinsel. And I'm going to tell you why he ties it this way. Uh, now, gold tinsel comes gold on one side, silver on the other. We're going to tie it silver side up so when we turn it, the gold will show through. The reason he's tying this, the variant of this is to imitate two flies that come off in our area here in central Pennsylvania in the spring at one time. Those two flies are the granum and the little black stone fly. And they both kind of look similar. So if you can kill two birds with one stone with one fly, more power to you and that's what we're doing here. What we're going to start out with and the reason we're putting this little gold tag on the back end is to imitate the granum with its egg sac. So we're going to put just about three wraps on here with this gold tinsel. And this is just going to be, like I said, to represent the egg sac on the granum. It's not going to be real pronounced, so if you're fishing it to fish the little black stone as an emerger, you know, it's not really going to be so pronounced that it's going to, you know, fool the trout into thinking it's not a little black stone. So we're going to tie that down. We just want, like I said, about three or four wraps on there, just enough to, just enough so you can see it. The next thing we're going to use is a piece of stripped peacock curl. Um, if you watched my video on the Quill Gordon, I showed you how to take a piece of peacock curl, strip it off. That's all we're doing here, just stripping all those green fibers off a piece of peacock curl. We're going to put it on and wrap it back to that gold and then wrap our thread back up. And uh, just like I said in the quill Gordon, the, the quill body doesn't make a real thick body. So I just like to add just a little bit of thread underneath it just to build it up a hair. Not much because we want to keep a thin body, thin natural size body but I want it just a little thicker than the hook shank. Now we're going to take this and we're going to wrap it up. Now on the standard um, alder pattern we would not strip the peacock curl. Okay? We would leave the peacock curl and I would only put one on. I tie it both ways. This I'm tying like I said because I want to imitate the little black stone and the granum at the same time. You want to get that small black body look to it. The peacock adds just a little bit more body than I like for the little black stone. So we're just going to wrap this up and tie it off. Okay now the next step on this and like like I said we're straying pretty far from the standard pattern here but it works well. So the next step I'm going to do standard pattern calls for black for a piece of black hackle. I'm going to show you a little bit different way to tie it. I'm going to use an Indian hen neck, okay? Just a very inexpensive Indian hen neck. And I'm going to look for a really dark like one of the darker feathers and I want a black because the standard pattern calls for black. But I'm going to show you how to take and make the the collar on this without without having to wrap it. We're going to do it like nymph legs. Okay, we're going to take one of these larger black feathers, and then we're going to take the center out of it. Okay, you have your feather here. We're going to strip back the middle of it to get the the right length legs we want. Okay. We're going to strip back that little tag in the middle, as you see there, and then we're going to pluck that out. Okay? Now, 
we're going to take these fibers, point them back down, and we're going to get the amount of the collar that we want to make there. We want about that many, okay? About, I don't know, 8 or 10 on each side. We're going to get it even there. Okay, now, you, now I just stripped all that back, but if you didn't strip that back, you could get like two or three flies out of this one. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that V, I'm just going to sit it right on top, okay? Then I'm going to pinch it down with my fingers, and I'm going to soft loop it down, and then wrap it back here. And that's going to give me my collar on this fly. It's going to give you the leggy look for the little black stone. Okay, that's a simple way to do a collar on a fly. I showed you that way because it's different than I used on, on the uh, Quill Gordon. I wanted to show you a different method. Now the next thing we're going to use is we're going to use two matched um, quill feathers. I'm going to zoom back out here so you can see this a little bit better. Okay, we're going to take two quill feathers. Okay, two matched ones meaning they're from each side of the bird. One's on the right wing, one's on the left wing. And I'm going to get them the same length. I'm going to put them together, okay, so they match up nice and equal. There's two feathers there. You see how I'm holding them together. And I have the tips together, okay. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pinch them together and then I'm going to take my scissors and I'm going to cut out a patch of the two of those. Okay, and the, and the thickness of this, of that cut, you want to be about the gap of your hook gap, okay? Zoom back in here. Okay, now these are matched wings, but not match real good. So I'm gonna take a fiber or two off the one side because I got a couple more on the one side than I did the other. Okay, now that I got them the same size and I got them the same length, matched together there. I'm just gonna set these down on top of the fly, and I want the I want the wing to be the same length as the body. I don't want it to be longer. Now, I'm using a goose wing here. Um, the original alder, as I said earlier, we're, we're straying from the straying from the standard. The original calls for a turkey. I use goose on this. I like the gray color for that little black stone. Okay, we're just going to sit it down on top. You saw me, I'm going to put one loose loop around and then top, pull it down tight and cup, finish it with a couple more wraps. Just going to cut that off, clean up our head, and that's our alder variant. Okay, This worked real well for us on Penn's Creek, swinging this as a wet fly. Um, like I said, at the time the granums were just starting to come off. But there was lots of little black stone flies in the air, so this covered both of those. With that little bit of gold back there, you get the effect of an egg sac. And the, like I said, the reason why I'm using the goose wing as compared to a turkey wing on my pattern is for the little black stone. They have a darker wing, more of a more of a gray color than the mottled turkey color. It worked really, really well for us. I think it'll work really well for you. Give it a try. Um, thanks again for watching. If you like what you see, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to like us on Facebook. We're constantly updating things on Facebook, uh, letting you know what's going on at the shop and stuff as we open up our new store. And um, just keep watching for the exciting news and things to come. This is Sean Holsinger from HolsingersFlyShop.com.